The web platform, as we know it today, is largely made up of these four technologies, HTTP, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, in fairness, there are other technologies that make up the web platform, but these are the big ones that I want to focus on in this video. So historically speaking, we really only had two of these technologies near the beginning of the web, HTML and HTTP. But shortly thereafter, CSS and JavaScript were added, and over time we added features and capabilities to each of these technologies, and as a result, we can build some pretty amazing applications on the web. Now, if we were to try and quantify how much effort went into improving each of these technologies over the last 30 or so years, I'd say clearly JavaScript and its related technologies received the most effort by far, but let me ask you this, do you think this was an effort well spent? In other words, should we maybe have spent more effort on some of these other technologies, or was the focus on JavaScript a good idea? Well, if you think about it, we can build some pretty amazing things with our modern technology stacks, but my goodness, are things complicated. I mean, things have become so complicated that we created new jobs like front-end engineers just to deal with the complexity of the modern front-end stack. So I wonder, in hindsight, did we focus most of our efforts in the right area with respect to these technologies? In other words, did spending so much effort on JavaScript and its related technologies lead us to the best possible outcome? Well, I'm of the mindset that we didn't actually spend our efforts as wisely as we could have. Okay, I know what some of you are thinking. You're probably saying, duh, James. There's so much churn in the JavaScript ecosystem that obviously we could have spent our efforts a bit more wisely, but that's not exactly what I'm referring to. You see, I've been using a new technology lately, and it's made me feel like we really missed a big opportunity to advance the web platform. What I mean is, what if instead of focusing so much of our efforts on JavaScript, we instead tried to push HTML a little bit further? In other words, could we have found solutions to some of our web application problems by just enhancing the capabilities of HTML rather than looking to JavaScript? So I'm pretty convinced that we could have solved many, if not most of our challenges in building web applications with an HTML-centric approach rather than the JavaScript-centric approach. Okay, so what do I mean by this HTML-centric approach? Well, to answer this question, I want to show you a relatively new technology called HTMX, which enhances the capabilities of HTML and allows you to build rich modern web applications without most of the complexity we all feel in the JavaScript ecosystem. Okay, but before we dive into HTMX, I want to set the stage by taking a quick historical look at what led us to the point we're at today. So if you recall, before the web became what it is today, native applications ruled the day. And native applications offered developers the ability to create very rich applications, whereas applications built using web 1.0 technologies were pretty limited in capabilities and felt a bit janky. Of course, native applications had their own problems, such as accessibility issues, platform dependence issues, as well as update and maintenance nightmares, just to name a few of the problems, and the web offered potential solutions to these types of problems. So in order to reap the potential benefits of the internet, the web platform would need to somehow enhance the capabilities of web applications to a point of near parity with native applications. And the way we achieved this near parity with native applications was by pushing really hard on the JavaScript aspects of the web platform. First, by sprinkling in a bit of JavaScript, and then using things like jQuery, and eventually moving on to single-page applications, along with all the associated tooling and libraries. But what if we could have largely achieved the same results by improving a different part of the web platform, HTML? Would an HTML-centric approach result in the same level of complexity we find ourselves struggling with, given our JavaScript-centric reality? Well, based on my experience with HTMX, I think you can build modern web applications with minimal additions to your HTML while also getting rid of most of the complexity associated with single-page applications. Okay, so what does an HTML-centric approach using HTMX look like? Well, let's build a few common application components with HTMX so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, but first, what is HTMX? Well, oddly enough, it's a JavaScript library that you can add to your HTML that significantly enhances what you can do with HTML. To show you what I'm talking about, let's build a basic counter with HTMX. Now, one of the nice things about HTMX is that you can use it with whatever backend language you like. I'll be using a new JavaScript web framework named Alicia, which is designed for the bun runtime, but again, you don't need to use JavaScript. You can use the backend language of your choice. Also, I'll be using JSX as a templating language, but to be clear, I'm not using JSX with React. 
it's just being used as a templating language on the server side, which is a pretty good use case for JSX. Now, I want to draw your attention to this layout function or component here. The relevant thing to notice here is that I've got a script tag to a CDN that's hosting the HTMX library. Adding a script tag like this is all you need to do to install and use HTMX. Let's go ahead and write the HTML for our counter, which I'll do in this get method call on the root URL. So I'll start by returning the layout component, which we saw at the top of this file, and then I'll add a plus button like this. Next I'll add a span to show the count value, and lastly I'll add a minus button like this. Now this counter span here renders this count variable, but of course I haven't actually defined this count variable, so up here I'll declare the variable and I'll initialize its value to zero. Oh, one more thing, I need to return this JSX. Next I'll run this web server, and we'll look at this page and we can see the two buttons plus the initial counter value of zero. If I click on the plus and minus buttons, nothing happens, so how do we make this work? Well, first, let's make the plus button work. Now, remember, we aren't using JavaScript on the front end. All we'll be doing on the front end to make this counter work is add some stuff to HTML. So I'll add a new HTML attribute named hxput onto the plus button, and I'll set the attribute value to be an HTTP endpoint named slash inc, which is short for increment. Okay, so what does this attribute do? Well, basically, when you see this attribute, what it's saying is that if you click on this button, an HTTP put request will be sent back to the server to this URL. So let's go ahead and create an endpoint that can handle this put request. So in Alicia, the way you can add a put endpoint is by calling the put method. Then as the first parameter, I'll add the endpoint URL of slash inc, and I'll add a function as the second parameter. Okay, so what do I put here in this callback function? Well, all we'll do is return the incremented count. Okay, so what do you think will happen with the code we've got right now? Well, let's go try it out and see. So I'll pull up this web page, and I'll click the plus button, and check that out. It appears that the counter value replaced the plus sign in the button, and that is in fact what happened. You see, the default behavior of this hxput attribute is that it calls the endpoint here, and then whatever is sent back from the server replaces the calling element's inner HTML. And if I keep pressing this button, we see the number getting incremented higher and higher. Okay, so this isn't doing exactly what we want, but it's pretty close. So how do we get this counter value put here, in the span, instead of being placed in the button? Well, all we need to do is add an additional HTML attribute to the plus button. So I'll add the HX target attribute, and I'll set its value to a CSS selector for the span. Now, since there's only one span on the page, I can just say the target is the span. Okay, let's go see if this works. So I'll refresh the page, then I'll click the plus button, and cool, it works. All right, so the plus button works. Now, what do we need to do to get the minus button working? Well, basically, we just need to add these two attributes here to the minus button. So I'll copy these attributes, then I'll add them to the minus button. Now this increment endpoint isn't going to work for us, so I'll change it to dec, short for decrement, but of course this endpoint doesn't exist, so let's go create it. So I'll call put, and I'll pass in the string slash dec as the first parameter, then I'll add a callback function, which will simply return the decremented account. Okay, let's go see if this button works. So I'll refresh the page, and I'll press the plus and minus buttons, and it works, cool. All right, so what's your thoughts on HTMX at this point? Well, it's pretty straightforward, right? Well, we added an attribute that triggers an HTTP put request to two different endpoints, and each endpoint either increments or decrements the counter and returns the count value. Then with this HX target attribute, we're telling HTMX where to place the value returned from the server, and we're saying to put it into this span. And the thing to remember about this HX target value is that it can be any CSS selector. So for example, if this span CSS selector didn't work for us, we can add an ID to the target span, then we could reference this ID in the HX target tags by saying hash count, and this works as well. Now you should know that this HX put attribute has these sibling tags. This HX get tag specifies an HTTP get request should occur, and this HX post tag specifies an HTTP post request should occur, and so on. Now in the case of buttons, the default event used to trigger the HTTP request is the click event, but we're not limited to click events. For example, I can add a new attribute named HX trigger, and I can set its value to any of the valid DOM events, such as double click. Let's try out this double click. So I'll refresh the page, and I'll try single clicking on the plus button, and as you can see, nothing happens. But if I double click on the button, then we see the value incremented. Okay, I want to look at a feature in HTMX called boosting. So here's another Alicia server, and you'll notice there are two pages. 
the home page, and the about page. Now if I navigate between each of these pages, currently the entire page is downloaded for each page. However, with one HTML attribute change, we can have the navigation between these pages happen via Ajax calls, thus avoiding the awful page flicker, but more importantly, avoiding the need to reload the head elements on any associated assets such as CSS and JavaScript, which greatly improves the load time. Let me show you how to enable this. Now I could add the Ajax boost attribute to each of these anchor tags like this, However, there's an easier way to handle this by taking advantage of the inheritance behavior of HTMX attributes. Let me show you what I mean. So instead of adding the HX boost to each anchor tag, I'll add it to the body and I'll set its value to true. Now since the HX boost attribute is on a parent element to both of these anchor tags, the anchor tags will inherit the HX boost attribute, and now if I pull up the home page, I can navigate to the about page, and notice that the entire page isn't replaced, only the contents of the body tag are replaced by the new page body. So the HX boost attribute automatically works on all anchor tags, but it also works on all form submits as well. Okay, there's one more demo I want to show you. So here's part of an app that shows a list of contacts on the page, and if you type in a search term and press enter, the list of contacts is filtered to match the search term. I want to use HTMX to make this search feature work as a live search. In other words, I want the list to filter as I type a search term in the input. Now, this live search idea probably seems like a feature that will require some front-end JavaScript, but as you'll see in a moment here, we can solve this by only using some HTML attributes and writing a little bit of back-end code. So how do we modify the current code to filter the list? Well, we can accomplish this live search feature in about 15 or 20 lines of code. Let me show you. So first I'll add the hx get attribute to the input, and I'll use the root path as the endpoint. Next I'll add an hx trigger attribute, and first I'll specify the search event. Then with a comma I'll add another event, the key up event, but we'll debounce the key up with a delay of 300 milliseconds, and we'll only fire the event if the input has changed. Now I'll add an hx target attribute, which I'll set to this UL tag. Okay, let's go try this live search feature out to see if it works. So I'll type in SON, and that's not right. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, the returned HTML from the root route is getting injected into this UL tag, which isn't exactly what we want. So how do we fix this? Well, in the case of the live search, we need to return just the LI tags, not the entire page. So I'm gonna say if some condition is true, we'll come back to this condition in a moment here, then I'll return the result of mapping over the filtered list of people, returning the person's name in a set of li tags. Okay, but back to this condition here, how do we know when we should return this partial page versus the entire page? Well, HTMX sends a few custom headers on each HTMX initiated request, so I'll pull in the headers, and I'll just console log the headers, and I'll comment out our conditional for the moment, now I'll go ahead and try the live search, then I'll go to the console, and look what was logged here. The headers that start with HX are the headers sent by HTMX, and check out this HX trigger header. Its value contains the ID of the element that triggered the request, and we can use this to determine if we should send the full page back or just the LI tags. So I'll create a constant named HX trigger, which I'll set to the header value HX-trigger. Now right here in this conditional, I'll say if the trigger for this request is from HTMX, and it's specifically the input with the ID of Q, then just return the li tags. Okay, let's go try this out. So I'll refresh the page, then I'll type in SON, and check that out. Our list is filtered in near real time, and we didn't have to write any front-end JavaScript. We handled everything with HTML attributes and a little bit of back-end JavaScript code. Now there's one problem you may have noticed with our solution, and that's the fact that if I refresh the page, I lose my filter, but this can be fixed with one additional attribute. So back on the search input, I'll add the hx push URL attribute, and I'll set it to true. Now doing this should update the URL when live searches are performed, so let's give this a try. So I'll refresh the page, then I'll enter SON, and we see our filtered list, but check this out. In the URL, we see the Q query parameter, which is set to SON, so we should be able to refresh the page and see the same results, and sure enough, it works. Cool. Okay, hopefully this has given you a sense of how HTMX works, and as you can see from these small demos, HTMX allows you to add single page app like features without having to create and maintain a single page application, which can eliminate a ton of complexity from your application. In fact, here's a link to another YouTube video of a talk about a company that replaced a React app with HTMX, and here are some of the benefits they observed.
they were able to deliver the same user experience with a 67% reduction in the code base size. They went from 21,500 lines to 7,200 lines of code. They increased the backend code by 140% from 500 lines to 1,200 lines, which is actually a good thing if you'd rather write your code in the backend language of your choosing instead of JavaScript. They reduced their JavaScript dependencies by 96%. They reduced their build time by 88%. They reduced their first load time to interactive by 50%. They were able to use larger data sets that React choked on and they reduced the application memory consumption by 46%. So as you can see, there are some potentially huge benefits to using HTMX over single page applications. Now, is HTMX a good choice for all web applications? Well, no. Obviously certain applications like Google Sheets and Google Maps wouldn't be a good fit for HTMX, but I bet you'd be surprised how many applications would be a good fit for HTMX. My guesstimate is that more than 80% of apps written as single page apps could most likely be written with great success using HTMX. So here's my suggestion. Give HTMX a try. You might just like it and it could save you a lot of headaches. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel.